at this time we're going to call to order the planning and zoning meeting scheduled for thursday june 20th at 6 p.m before i start the meeting i'd like to remind the public tonight that there is a public hearing in the effort that there's a lot of people that would like to speak tonight we would love to give everybody an opportunity to speak when it comes time but we are going to limit everybody but the applicant to two minutes during that time period also if you're speaking of a group that's all going to say the same thing please elect somebody from that group to speak and say i'm also speaking for these people as well this evening that way we can kind of keep things moving along uh, also, I want to remind you that uh, the Planning and Zoning Council, as well as Town Council and the Town of Florence, will not tolerate any threatening or intimidating arguments this evening in this meeting. Mr. O'Gain, with that, would you take roll call, please? Yes, sir. Chairman Woolley? Present. Vice Chair Putter? Present. Commissioner Petty? Commissioner Anderson? Present. Commissioner Reed? Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. Would you all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next agenda item this evening is going to be the discussion, approval, or disapproval of the minutes for the special meeting conducted on September 25th of 2012. Has everybody got an opportunity to look at these minutes? Yes. Yes. Is there any discussion or corrections on these minutes? I have nothing. None. With that, I'll take a motion for approval. I make a motion that we approve the minutes for the special meeting of the town council. Uh, uh, the town of Florence Planning and Zoning Commission held on Tuesday, September the 25th. I have a motion to approve the minutes from September 25th, 2012. Motion made this evening by Commissioner Anderson and seconded by Commissioner Putrick. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Those, me those meeting minutes have been approved. Thank you. Next agenda item for this evening will be case number 5A. This is case number PZC 24-13. Dash conditional use permit on the Healing Healthcare 3 Incorporated. This is a presentation and recommendation for a request by Rakesh Pawa Healing Healthcare 3 Incorporated on behalf of OM Shiv Radiology for approval of a conditional use permit to allow the proposed medical marijuana dispensary on Highway Business Commercial B2 zoned property located at 801 North Pinal Parkway, Florence, Arizona a.k.a. APN 200-46-005V. I'm assuming we have a presentation on this? Yes, we do. Um, my director, Mark Eckhoff, will be taking the presentation tonight. Chair, members of the commission, good evening. Um, why don't we start off, if I, if I could, just to note that uh, you received some additions to your, to your packet. So I just want to clarify exactly what those were. There were some additional uh, letters, both for and against. Um, so all in all, if we take what we had and what we have added since you received your packet, uh, we have received a, a, a couple of support letters, uh, one from Mr. Jim Cox and also one from Mr. Rodney Rhodes. Those are letters that are in su support of the application. Uh, I will note for the record that the letter from the Chamber of Commerce has been retracted since your packet went out. So is that, that letter is not for a uh, uh, discussion on this, on this particular item. Uh, we also just received a, an opposition letter uh, from Dr. Mollenhauer uh, at the Florence Chiropractic uh, Facility, which is immediately uh, well, maybe not necessarily immediately, but it's across the street from the subject facility. And also, uh, there was an updated letter from the Arizona Department of Corrections. I believe you have the behavior, and that was uh, op opposing the request. And there was a letter from Behavioral System Southwest, the Florence Residential Reentry Center, in opposition to, to the request uh, for reasons that are 
um, stated and somewhat different than the other uh, opposition letters that you received. And then also originally in your, in your packet, uh, you do have a letter from the London Land Company, uh, which, which is the entity that represents a, a group called Yol LLC, which is one of the primary private property owners in what we know as the Territory Square project, and they uh, have frontage along Highway 79. Um, also, uh, McDonald's has reiterated their their opposition to the to the subject request. To the subject request, uh, and specifically, I, I should not say just McDonald's. It's uh, Robert Sousa, which is the uh, uh, he runs the McDonald's there uh, adjacent to, to this site. Uh, was there were there any other letters to note? <coughs> Okay, all right, so I think that's an update on the, on the letters. Just wanted to make sure you had those in front of you since a couple of them came in, come in, came in late. Obviously, we'll have a public hearing on this request tonight. I'm sure uh, some of those folks may want to elaborate upon their written statements, and there'll be folks that haven't provided written statements that will have comments. I don't think I need to spend a whole lot of time with the overview on, on how this all came about as, as far as the, the Voters Act, the Arizona Medical Marijuana Act. And in fact, I suspect that the applicant and some of his representatives tonight are probably going to give you a little bit of an overview on the history of how that law came into effect, what transpired since the voters uh, passed that law, and uh, some of the other things that have happened. We've kind of been down this road talking about um, a couple of proposed medical marijuana dispensary sites before. Um, I will remind you that after the law went into effect, the law allowed municipalities to write provisions into their zoning code uh, to basically uh, have provisions to where these types of facilities would, would be located at. Facilities meaning dispensaries or cultivation sites. There is a provision in the law still that allows for um, largely unregulated uh, care, caregiver uh, growing or growing in your in your individual home if you are not within a certain distance of a dispensary. Uh, but our code specifically dealt with the, where dis dispensaries could be located and where cultivation sites could be located. Uh, the applicant, Rakesh Pawa, uh, he had a similar request. It's not the exact uh, request that we have here today, but he, he had a similar request that uh, was submitted in the past. And at that time, there was very little comments comments on it. Uh, staff had a different recommendation on that than we do than we do tonight. It went to the town council. Uh, there was some discussion. There was opposition from McDonald's, as I stated, um, and and the conditional use permit was denied by the council at that at that time. So we do have a new application in in front of us. It is still for the former Big O Tires site, which the address is 801 North Pinnell Parkway, and that building now it's probably going on close to. It's, it's definitely in its fourth year, probably going on its fifth year, that it's been sitting there uh, vacant and not, not looking very attractive. It's nudging there on the, uh, along Highway 79 between the Pinal County Courthouse Complex and the McDonald's that, I've, that I referenced, uh, so north of Diversion Dam Road, east of Highway 79. Mr. Pawa is, is proposing tonight uh, to proportion a, uh, to, to use a portion of the former Big O facility for a medical marijuana dispensary location. Um, a portion because you can't technically utilize the whole thing because there are size limitations. So a portion of it would be utilized. The building still sits essentially like it is today, but the building would be modified so that a portion of the site could be utilized for this use. We don't know what the remainder of the building would be utilized for. The, grease, the former Grease Monkey site beyond that, uh, also we don't have any plans that uh, are on the table for that, and that is not subject um, to any part of this request. Um, but if approved, Mr. Pawa would modify the building, which is about 5,400 square feet now. He would uh, cut it down to uh, utilize about 2,500 square feet towards the uh, medical marijuana dispensary, and he's probably going to do a better job of explaining that floor plan, what happens, how how people come in there and how, how everything is processed and the dispensing um, uh, operation. 
Um, really, staff's job in, in, in reviewing the application primarily uh, is the same as yours, and we're looking at the, uh, the provisions of, of whether the, this use is appropriate at, at this subject location. So, as you know, a conditionally permitted use, that's what we're here for tonight, a conditional use permit. Conditionally permitted use is a use that in our code we've said that it, it may be appropriate uh, in the zoning district in certain areas, but perhaps not in certain areas. So there are guidelines that we, that we follow, fairly universal from municipality to municipality, uh, but the primary objective of that, one would probably say, is to evaluate the appropriateness of the use at a particular location. So maybe a, a use is fine at one location, and maybe it's absolutely inappropriate at another location. Uh, there's a compatibility, uh, a heavy compatibility component. So we've looked, at the, we've looked at the site, we've looked at the proposal, and we've gone through the steps that we do, uh, that we utilize on a conditional use permit. Uh, where is the site? What is the proposed use? What are the surrounding land uses? Uh, we all know that very well. It is generally surrounded by uh, Commercial, commercial properties of various various types, the courthouse, Territory Square. Uh, now we have the Florence uh, Superstop under construction there at the uh, southeast corner of Diversion Dam and, and Highway 79. Uh, the former Grease Monkey site, the chiropractic office. Uh, there is some residential on the other side of Pinal Parkway further away. And obviously uh, there is an abundance of correctional facilities uh, in the nearby vicinity. Um, both facilities that are owned and operated by the state of Arizona and also private facilities which contract with the state of Arizona and house um, uh, the inmates that the state is responsible for. So we know, where the, we know where the site is and we understand the surrounding land uses. We understand the access to the site because we're not changing anything on that. They have access off of 79. There's also cross access uh, to, other, to other properties there. The access was appropriate for uh, the big O tires that was formerly there was appropriate for the grease monkey. It's appropriate for the adjacent businesses. Uh, don't, we don't have an issue on, on access to the site. And in fact, the proposed use, if approved, would probably generate less traffic than big O and grease monkey uh, did. Uh, the, the major issue that comes up tonight because of the letters of, of opposition, and I will note there, the, there's also letters of support, so that's, that's understood. Uh, but item C, when we're looking at the impact on adjoining and surrounding property, if the application is approved. And while we do find that the subject property, it's in the general plan supporting a commercial use, a non-residential land use, and the property is zone B2. So it is an adequate commercial property, previously enjoyed some success as a commercial property, and will again uh, in the future uh, with or without this, uh, this application be, being approved. Um, the, the evaluation of the potential impacts and the compatibility is, is, the, is, the, is the big part of item C. So we look at those object, objections that you, that you received, uh, both before the meeting and, and uh, that I noted here. And the main objection that seems to come from from the property owners is, a, is, a, is certainly a question of compatibility and the appropriateness of this, of this use at this particular location. Um, there are obviously some viewpoints on the use, use in general and obviously we've received um, you know, verbal feedback about you know, how people feel about the, the law. We're not talking about the, about the law. Uh, because the, the, the voters of Arizona passed that, the law went into effect, um, and the Department of Health Services, a state agency, is, is uh, implementing, implementing the provisions of this, of this law. So uh, really, again, we go back to compatibility. Uh, Mr. Sousa of the McDonald's um, store there um, previously stated at the past application, and then again with this application, does not feel it's uh, compatible to a family restaurant, a family, a family business. Um, Arizona Department of Corrections, if I could kind of summarize their, their concerns, it's really largely again on, on compatibility and the appropriateness of that use um, next to 
or in the vicinity of their facilities, including their facilities that, they're, that they have a contractual obligation for. Although it may be a geo or it may be another facility, uh, they still have a contractual obligation. And in fact, I believe uh, the terms of those deals usually are that at some point, uh, the facility will go back into the hands of the state of, state of Arizona. So uh, they do have concerns that they've expressed. Their concerns also extend to the impact a use like this would have on the ability to be successful in, in what they do as far as um, their rehabilitative efforts and uh, in preparing folks to re-enter uh, into uh, society outside of the correctional facilities. Um, Mrs. London uh, of the uh, Territory Square property, also the concern is about the appropriateness of this use at that location and how it, 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 it would it impact uh, the Territory Square property and the, few, and the marketing efforts of that property and the ultimate development of that, of that property. Uh, in fact, there have been a lot, there's been a lot of um, effort put into that property in regard in, in planning and engineering and otherwise, and they are looking to enhance their marketing of that, of that property. And they are, uh, they obviously have some concerns about being aware of any type of use that goes in their vicinity, and they have expressed uh, concern about this. Um, <clears throat> behavioral health has a uh, has a has a different argument and they may be able to elaborate on that tonight and their interpretation again I'm summarizing um, they do believe that we should consider uh, their particular facility a, a place of work worship um, if it were considered such then it would be it it would not meet the separation criteria for a a medical mar marijuana dispensary and a place of worship. Um, I will let them elaborate on, on, that, on that argument, and that interpretation is, is certainly subject to, to debate. Uh, for the record, also not the same request, but a similar request previously went to the town council, as I stated, and uh, at, that, at that time, they believed that the use was not compatible. I will note that a past decision of the council is obviously not binding on the on 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 any of us, and certainly not the new the new council. That was just stated stated for the record. When we do get to the point of making the recommendation, there are things that, if you feel that the use might be approved, there are or if it were, uh, if certain components of the uh, use were addressed, such as um, yard requirements or buffers or fences or parking or or the duration of the use, et cetera, et cetera. But those stipulations regarding that could be put into a conditional use permit. Uh, in addition, there are standard conditions on a conditional use permit uh, that the use sh shall not be final until all conditions imposed have been met. The, um, the restrictions, the conditional use permit is gonna run with, it's gonna run with the land. Now this is going to be a little bit different because there's a specific license that grant, granted to operate the dispensary, so it's not like just anybody off the street could come along and, 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 and pick up the use, but a use permit does run with the, with the, with the land. Uh, also the conditions um, of the Planning and Zoning Commission and ultimately the Council um, uh, would be applicable on the use permit. And then there would be a resolution done to grant the conditional use permit by the council. Uh, public participation process. Uh, been a sign posted on the property. It talks about the meeting tonight. We're also looking at bringing this request to the town council on July 15th. And, and that'll also be a public meeting and then it'll also be action. It's uh, not an ordinance, so it's, so it's handled in one, in one meeting. We also have notified all the surrounding property owners within 300 feet. We also have placed a notice in the paper. I think, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned that a sign was posted on the, on the property. <clears throat> uh, based on everything we've covered and based on the comments that have been received up to this point, obviously we're not privy to the public comment that will be presented tonight. Uh, ba but based on the information received thus far, uh, public comments on the request calling to the potential uh, 
compatibility of this use with surrounding property owners. We've discussed that. Uh, public comments on the request question the impact of the use on surrounding businesses, uh, proposed businesses, and the town as a, as a whole. Um, existing businesses such as the chiropractic office, the McDonald's, uh, and obviously the correctional facilities, though uh, you may interpret those as a business or not. Uh, Arizona Department of, of Corrections opposes this type of use in close proximity to their correctional facilities as it may present public safety concerns and could have negative impacts on their programming and rehabilitation efforts. A medical marijuana dispensary is a conditionally permitted use in a highway business commercial B2 zoning district, which means that it, that it is a use that can be carefully evaluated and not allowed should it be deemed inappropriate for a specific location. Uh, the proposed use be incompatible with the town's visionary plans for the Territory Square project, uh, which has been promoted in various town marketing materials and on the town webpage. The town is also obviously a participant in that project and a property owner in that project. The frontage of the property on Highway 79, which it would be most impacted uh, by the particular use, is, is, the, um, is the London parcel recommendation. Uh, by acting on the conditional use permit, the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, thereby accepts staff's findings made on the request. Based on the findings established for the case, staff, staff recommends that the Planning and Zoning Commission send an unfavorable recommendation on this conditional use permit request to the Mayor and Town Council. And with that, um, I believe there's an opportunity to go ahead and open the public hearing and we, and we go continue the discussion from there if we may. Okay, just a reminder before I open the public hearing, uh, we are limiting the public to two minutes this evening. If you are here from one group that's all gonna stand up and say the same thing, we're asking you to elect a spokesperson, I'm not denying anybody the opportunity to come up, it just will make the process go faster if we can do that tonight. So with that, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Public hearing is now open. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Please state your name and your address for the record, please. My name is Rakip Rakesh Pawar, and I reside in Phoenix, 13404 South 33rd Court, Phoenix, Arizona. Thank you. I have been involved in this community for many, many years. I had a business on 200 South Main as uh, Harry Healthcare, where there were four physicians involved and there was a trailer park there for doing the x-rays. And I was presented this plaque by Chamber of Commerce as the business of the year in year 2001. I'm the same business person who is coming in front of you today to bring another business to the town which is going to be highly secured and only the patients will be allowed to enter the premises who have been issued a card by Department of Health. We are here to follow all the guidelines mandated by the state law and by Department of Health. Nobody who does not have the card will be allowed to enter the premises. And this will be monitored 24-7 by highly security cameras and nobody will be allowed access to the building. Inside of the building will be secured by block walls so for extra security protection, so there is no vandalism. There are going to be no signs on the building displaying that it's a medical marijuana facility. We'll have a very small sign, and it is going to be a destination place for the patients who are unable to procure their medicine, which has been prescribed to them by the Department of Health. And we are here to just fill up that niche in the market. We are not here to promote vandalism or illegal drug traffic. We just want to serve a need for the community and be a part of the community. So I would request you all to reconsider and give me an opportunity to be a part of this community like I was in 2000. I still want to serve the community and help the patients who are in need for this medicine. There are going to be medical professionals in scrubs who will be dispensing the medicine as desired by the Department of Health. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
there any more public that would like to speak at this time? Please state your name and uh, address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Carson McWilliams. I live at 6404 Yorktown Way in Anthem. Um, I'm here tonight uh, as an employee of the Department of Corrections, representing the department, I'm also representing the director. Mr. Ryan, um, he has written a letter. I know you gentlemen have it. So I won't read the letter to you, but I'd like to elaborate a little bit on what it says. Um, and I'm here just not just as a member of the department, but also as a citizen of this town. And I've lived here for many years and worked in the department for many years. And you know, part of our mission is um, our main focus is public safety. We believe as a department that this is a conflict of interest for what we are doing as our, our mission of public safety. Also, our programming that we do with inmates. Um, there's a lot of uh, tax dollars that are spent um, and, and used to rehabil rehabilitate people, especially in the realm of drug addiction. Um, and then, of course, the other factor that is a main concern for us is the number, the volume of inmates that we have in this town and the number of visits that come here. People come from all over the, the state and sometimes out of state to visit. And um, it opens the door for contraband concerns for us and certainly a violation of state laws about uh, transporting uh, narcotics on, on state property. So we would certainly be opposed to this or any other proposal to put a marijuana dispensary in this uh, town. And we just wanted to express um, how we feel about it and um, would certainly uh, hope and recommend that you would uh, deny this request. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yep. Please state your name and address for the record. Good evening. Lando Boyles, Pinal County Attorney from City of Maricopa. Um, two issues here. First of all, first issue is that marijuana is a Schedule One drug. The individuals who are the, the groups that decide what Schedule One drugs are are the DEA, Drug Enforcement Agency, and the Food and Drug Administration. And they decide together what are Schedule One and what are Schedule, there's five different schedules. Schedule One means that it has, in part, no medical value whatsoever. That's the first point. Second point is, if you don't want to buy in on that concept, this violates your own city ordinance, I believe it's chapter 152, that says that this can't be within 660 feet of any public library or any religious facility based on the fact that that is a sensitive use area. You have the, um, directly behind it, the Behavioral System Southwest, which is a religious facility in part. You also have, within 660 feet, the law library, which is the public law library over at the courthouse. Both of those would violate your own city ordinance. So based on those two reasons, first it's a Schedule One drug and has absolutely no use for medical purposes, and two, that it violates your own zoning, we're asking that you vote against this and not allow this facility to be installed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is John Gay, uh, 1320 South Elizabeth, uh, right here in the town of Florence. Uh, I, I too have a dual role here this evening. I'm a 30-year member of this community, uh, children that went through kindergarten to high school and, and, and college, uh, and, and they've chosen to live in this community and purchase homes themselves. I also represent the GEO Group, <clears throat> both the facilities here on, on uh, Diversion Dam Road. We too have a high level of interest in the security aspect of potentially having these things, or this, this dispensary, in close vicinity to our facility. We spent a lot of labor, time, and money trying to not only re rehabilitate the inmate population, but prevent those individuals who come in and visit that family member, who in our opinion failed uh, early on to put them on the right track, smuggling those type of narcotics into those institutions. Uh, we, we believe, GEO believes, uh, I've been contacted by our regional office in Los Angeles, our corporate office in Florida, and they are adamant that um, this is not a good thing for this community. Um, I would say personally that uh, the gentleman that wants to open the dispensary, that is given his address as Phoenix, Arizona, um, open it in Phoenix, Arizona. 
we don't want you in Florence. Um, the last thing I would say is, in reviewing your your jobs as a as a zoning commission under, under C subcategory, the last thing listed in there is that you're to do or consider those things that are best for the community. And uh, I adamantly and wholeheartedly believe that the best thing for this community is not to introduce a location where Schedule A, Schedule One illegal narcotics can be distributed. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Please state your name and address for the record. I'm Steve Doran. I'm the program director for Behavioral Systems Southwest. My address is 6025 uh, South Alameda, Gold Canyon, Arizona. Thank you. Um, I just want to, I'm not going to read the letter to you that I wrote um, earlier this week. I just want to reiterate what we do at Behavioral Systems Southwest. We are a residential reentry center, and our job is to get people or to get uh, federal inmates ready to transition back into the community. Uh, we do that a number of different ways. Um, one of those is that we are, under state law, we are considered a private vocational program. All of the residents are required to go through uh, various vocational training in order to go out and obtain employment and or go to school uh, in the community full time. Uh, they are also probably over 90% of our residents um, are there because of alcohol and drug abuse. They are required to take alcohol and uh, drug abuse uh, treatment classes, um, uh, which they must pass in order to uh, not fail the program and be returned to prison. And then last but not least, we did uh, make an objection based on the fact that a specific portion of our site is a um, federally recognized place of worship. Uh, we are required under federal mandate <laughs> to provide the Native Americans uh, with uh, a, a separate location on our facility uh, to worship uh, as they see fit. Um, it is protected under federal law and uh, we have to abide by all those rules as well. So. Um, uh, based on the township zone or the town zone ordinance, um, we believe that uh, the uh, usage permit should not be granted, uh, you know, based on that fact and the others that I've mentioned. Thank, Thank you sir. very much, sir. Thank you. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Sherry George, and I'm the chairman of the Santan Valley Substance Abuse Coalition. My address is 29581 North Candlewood Drive, Santan Valley, Arizona. Um, as I said, I am the chairman of the Santan Valley Substance Abuse Coalition, and since our, in, and by the way, I do want to state that we also um, handle and support the community of Florence as well as part of our coalition. Um, since um, the coalition's inception in October 2011, we have worked very hard and diligently um, and partnered with the Pinal County Sheriff's Department, the Pinal County Attorney's Office, and the three um, unified school districts, Florence, uh, Coolidge, and um, J.O. Combs, to bring the, the Scottsdale-based Not My Kid program, a substance abuse program, to all of our local schools. We just completed our first year. Um, there are several other projects that we have also brought to the community to reduce substance abuse. And um, if we feel we're, we've worked so hard to get where we're at, and if this dispensary is allowed to open, we feel that it'll do serious damage and thwart our efforts to reduce drug use in the community due to increased access, um, especially to our youth as well as everyone. Um, since I do not have time to share all of the research and data, um, I just want to uh, impart to you a couple of statistics. Um, here locally in Pinal County, um, and this is taken from the Arizona Youth Survey from 2012, uh, one in 10 students got uh, received marijuana from someone who had a medical marijuana card. And um, if this dispensary is allowed to open, we feel that this will just um, skyrocket and go up from the one in 10 uh, youth right now that uh, get their marijuana from someone with a medical uh, use card. I just want to read one statistic here. 
Um, this is from the state of Colorado um, and from uh, an attorney there in Colorado. Walsh said there has been an alarming and substantial spike in marijuana abuse by young people with a proliferation of dispensaries. Um, and I, I would like to, if I'm permitted, to submit the coalition research to um, the council for review. Uh, it includes uh, all kinds of different information and statistics from other states that have adopted those dispensaries. And uh, so if I could respectfully submit all that research and data that the coalition has done, you, I would greatly appreciate it. You can give it to staff it. and we can give it to you. Pardon me? You can give it to us and we can show you. Okay, I can give it to you right now? Or Okay, I wish I had time. To okay, ma'am, and your two minutes are up. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, much. well, we're against it. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for the work you do. Yes. <laughs> Next. Anybody else? Gentlemen, good evening. Uh, good evening. I'm Bob Susan. I own the McDonald's right ne next to this proposed facility. Actually, Can you state your address also for the record, sir? It's uh, 2250 North Pinal Avenue, Casa Grande, Arizona. Thank you. Um, I've written two letters uh, on the initial application and on this one. I have a family business, and I, this is a terrible location for this. So, you know, where you've, you've got state facilities, it, you know, I couldn't understand why they applied the first time, now they're reapplying. Um, I've heard a lot of comments. I just, I've, it's going to be detrimental to my business unsolicited I'm starting to receive emails through the 1-800 McDonald's line that customers will not come in my restaurant if that facility opens I have a few of them, and I don't even know who these people are so I hope you make the right decision thank you thank you sir thank you sir do you have any other public that would like to speak this evening My name is uh, Daniel Kingston. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I strongly oppose the dispensary here for a number of reasons. Three. One, uh, based on my research, there's 25,000 people in this city. Based on what the state is telling us, there's only 90 patients in Florence. That's less than one-third of one percent of your population that needs this dispensary. There's 40,000 patients in the state of Arizona. In time, I imagine 40,000 people descending onto this town looking to score dope is a bad thing. Next to a facility that's serving Happy Meals and kids running around, it's just not good. That's point one. Point two is I heard a lot about the security of this facility on the inside. Cameras. Okay. It sounds like the employees are going to be secured. What about the people when they get to their car out in the parking lot? What about when they get home? Who's going to protect them? This is just bad for Florence, in my opinion. Thirdly, <clears throat> there is a state law. But they also told the feds, we don't care. We're our own governing body. We're going to do what we want. We're going to vote. And I implore you to do the same thing as Florence, as your own governing body. Make your own stand, because you do not want to make Florence the drug capital of Arizona, in my opinion. So I implore you to not approve this, and thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Hi, my name is William Jameson. I reside in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. <clears throat> I am a, a medical marijuana patient. Uh, over the last 20 years, I've been consulted by several state agencies, dispensary groups, including uh, the dispensary group here in front of you. Um, what I've seen in the past uh, when consulting with not only cities like yourselves in regards to zoning and verifications and security and protocols, such like that, uh, I've looked at and helped dispensary groups manage the process along the way. And, the two things that I've noticed along the way is, is um, the individuals that, who they get, they get into this industry uh, for the wrong reason, and they get into it to profit, and they don't get it in to provide medicine to patients. Um, I'd like to say that I feel that this group uh, is one of those groups. The second part of it that, that I look at is the experience that they bring to the table. Often the combination of the two, the need to profit and the lack of experience, creates an environment in which individuals do things far faster, far quicker to take the risk because they're driving their whole business on the profit. And what I would say is the dispensary group has retained Dixie Elixirs and paid $75,000 to have their right to have the largest medical marijuana infusion kitchen and products nationwide out of their dispensary. And so by 
reviewing their policy today and the, the application that's in front of you, you have the ability to stop the dispensary from providing edibles to the tune of Dixie Elixir's vast, vast variety of products um, being licensed through the Florence dispensary. Most recently, the, the CEO of Dixie Elixir was arrested uh, back east for possession of controlled substance. He's currently pleaded to guilty to the process and is under a two-year uh, parole process. He was doing a substance in a state in which there is no medical marijuana policy. Uh, I'd say take a look at the irresponsibility of that individual combined with the lack of experience uh, in a small city like this. I think it could be detriment to the future of Florence. Thank you for your time and opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there any more public that would like to speak at this time? Matthew Hum, uh, 1380 North 86 Way, Scottsdale, Arizona. Thank you. Uh, I've worked with um, different outfits that have um, taken on this task of forming a dispensary. Um, the dispensary, I know the public concern is big on safety. By not allowing this dispensary, there are apparently, it was a lower estimate of 90 patients in Florence. I have 125. Each caregiver patient because Florence is its own cha, so it's its own 25 mile radius. Each patient would be allowed to grow 12 plants, 90 times 12, 1,080 plants, unregulated by anybody, not by the state of Arizona, by, by nobody, grown with who knows what, with God knows what, sold to who knows who. This dispensary is extremely regulated by the state of Arizona, not only in the process of the growing, but the selling. So if their concern is a rampant drug problem, by not having this dispensary, they will create a rampant drug problem. People selling un, pretty much unregulated marijuana from the houses, from any location, to a school, to anybody that's gonna knock on their door and offer them money for their extra supply. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have any more public that would like to speak at this time? With that, I'll close. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to present something as well here as a liaison for the town council, if I may. He has to do that outside public hearing, correct? He may speak at the public hearing. Okay, just want to make sure we're legit. Go ahead. Uh, as coming here from the town council, I just want to make sure that we understand that your responsibility is to ensure that, that the, the ordinances are followed. And in looking at the ordinance, you know, we're looking at the guidelines as, as what we're, what's there under Arizona Proposition 203. And the concerns that have been brought up to, to me as a council member or to, for the town has been under three areas, the library, under the schools, as well as religious services. And under religious services, you have, first of all, the Religious Land Use of Incarcerated Persons Act, which looks at determining what is considered a place of worship. And when you bring that into play, it also comes into play with one of the documents that was provided, the American Indian Religious Freedom Act, which allows the ability for Native Americans to worship in a sweat lodge. And that's one that's located as well as approximately 80 yards or 100 yards to this facility at 801 North Park or Pinal Avenue. In the second area we have to look at is, besides the library, which is also located at the Pinal County Courthouse, is we also have to look at education. And education, which comes into play under the No Child Left Behind or the 1986 Anti-Drug Abuse Act, also comes into play with the Drug-Free School Zone. Pinal County Adult Detention Center currently has a school within its facility, which is known as the Esperanza School. And this school is provided in three parts. One is for the adult basic education of GED, Another portion is for special education of students under the age of 21. And it also covers those that are juveniles under the age of 18 who are remanded to the adult court system. So in looking at those three areas, what I'm asking from the board or from the council to the board is to ensure that this ordinances that are set up through the city or the town are followed correctly and uh, that we make the decision the best we can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have any more public that would like to speak at this time? If there's no more public that would like to speak at this time, I will close the public hearing. The public hearing is now closed and I'll open up to commissioners.
Um, I, would, I would just like to comment um, on Mr. Boyle's comment uh, about what the federal government says about it. Um, I, I know a person who is a former chairman of the board of the American Cancer Society and is now a member of the International Cancer Board. They do not endorse the use of marijuana for, um, for medical reasons to help ease the pain of cancer. Um, so that's a pretty strong uh, statement from both of those uh, boards. Uh, and um, I, I would like to ask the chief uh, a, a question, um, and that's regarding uh, any statistical evidence. Uh, the, the young lady gave us a little bit, but any statistical evidence that he may have that pertains to um, the increase in um, uh, crime, if you will, uh, related with uh, the use of marijuana, medical marijuana, dispensaries, and that kind of stuff. Chief, go ahead and state your name and address for the record, please. Dan Hughes, Chief of Florence Police Department, 2918 North Congressional Court, Florence, Arizona. Thank so you. I'm not only the chief, but I am a member here in Florence. I don't have, uh, I haven't had a chance to actually do a lot of statistical information. I can tell you anecdotally that I do uh, stay in contact. Excuse me. Um, I don't mean to interrupt you. I, I do apologize. Just to make sure we're on the um, following the open meeting law, I, I think the questioning has to be towards the case. I know it's about the the medical marijuana, but I don't this believe that to, this speaks to compatibility. Okay, so I believe if it was about, well, that's fine. Go ahead. Go ahead and continue. Yeah. I have spoken to other chiefs who have dealt with medical marijuana dispensaries and there has been a slight increase in crime in and around those facilities. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Could, uh, could, That's you, all I could you stay? Just re I just have a couple. Um, again, could you, there's 18 states, I believe, that have okayed medical marijuana and it's, it's illegal for the, fed, the federal government. It's, it's an illegal thing. So how, how do they... I mean, do they, do, do the feds impose at all into these states or do they leave them totally alone or? DEA and other federal agencies still enforce um, the laws against marijuana and we're constantly working with DEA more on issues that come up from the border, but they do enforce those laws on marijuana. Okay. And then uh, I guess the other thing, uh, one of the speakers said there was 40,000 people with it would descend upon us. Uh, there's, there's 24 marijuana zones. It's all based on pharmacies. You can have 10 pharmacies per every dispensary. So um, where are, do you have any idea where we are on a, on a build out, if you would say? There's, you can have a total of 124 uh, dispensaries in the state. I mean, how many are there? Do you have any idea? I don't know at this time. Mm -hmm. would, would any? 28. 28 Sir, I can't, I can't have you yell at answers during the meeting. Thank you. Okay. I'm not familiar with that information. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I see you over there brewing. <laughs> Chair. Chair, members of the commission, um, you know, some of this additional information was provided in the public testimony and in the letters, and uh, I, I would say as staff and as the staff person for the town of Florence that makes um, interpretations on, on land uses and the definitions of land uses, which, which folks ultimately can't appeal, but uh, uh, I, would, I, I would say I'm, I'm not completely comfortable on the spot making a determination of whether a certain use is potentially a religious uh, institution or educational vocational uh, institution. Um, but if indeed the Pinal County Courthouse does have a facility in there uh, that is a, a, a library within that facility that the general public can go into and read law books or uh, obtain information through that through that means if it is an actual uh, library facility uh, that uh, 
that most likely uh, would be considered a, uh, a sensitive, sensitive use. Uh, sensitive use is a um, school, public or private recreation center, park, public library, place of worship, massage, establishment, sexually oriented business, or a teen club. Uh, we go on to, to specifically define a lot of those facilities, uh, what, they, what they are. Um, a public library, it's, um, that's a pretty obvious, in my, in my opinion, um, f facility. If it is a place that has books or other media equipment that the general public can walk in. If I could walk over there right now and check out something, I haven't been to the facility, I had no knowledge of that facility up until this point, uh, but I would clearly say that that is a, 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 a strong issue for you to evaluate along with the other testimony that was uh, provided. Um, the code specifically does say in, in section 152.04 distance separation requirements that uh, no medical marijuana dispensary, medical marijuana dispensary off-site cultivation location or medical marijuana infusion facility shall be operated or maintained within 660 feet of any sensitive use, which I've named what those are within the corporate limits of Florence. Uh, this distance separation provision is not applicable for cases where the aforementioned uses are separated by a state highway except as governed by the Arizona Medical Marijuana Act and applicable state statutes. As you can see on the map, that's a 300 foot buffer from this facility and clearly uh, at 300 foot you've got the Pinal County Courthouse within there. Uh, so obviously within 660 feet you do. So that would be another um, point that, that should be given serious consideration and we'll have follow up on that and on the additional items provided tonight at the town council meeting. But I just wanted to add that that was uh, an enlightening finding that came out came out tonight. Thank you. I had one other question for uh, Mark. Uh, would, are we supposed to have Lance Molinar's letter up here, or do you have it there uh, against his chiropractor? Oh, um, do you I not have his? Find it. Do you not have his? Well, if you do not have that in front of you, I will I will read it for the benefit of the of the chair and the commission. He's directly uh, across the street, right? Yes, oh. yes. Uh, and in fact, you can see on the number 700, I believe, on that map, right, is where that facility is is located. Uh, so it's caddy corner to the to the McDonald's. Uh, Dr. Lance uh, Mullenhauer uh, runs the Florence Chiropractic, the only chiropractic clinic in town. It happens to be across the road from where their medical marijuana clinic will be. I was recently contacted by the man who's opening the clinic looking for support from surrounding businesses and I have to say that I'm not comfortable with the clinic being that close to my place of business right next to the main highway and there are too many questions for me to give my support for this type of business. I am all for new growth and jobs coming to the town uh, but not at the cost of my business and with the unknown and possibly negative uh, impact that it may have on my business. Um, uh, if he gets a, I'm paraphrasing, if he gets a vote and my voice matters, uh, then that's a no vote for the medical marijuana clinic right outside my, my door. Um, so clearly an opposition from the, from the doctor um, who has his business in that, in, in that building. As a planning zoning commission, it is our responsibility as appointees of the town council to not decide what's right or wrong for Florence, but to decide what's right or wrong for the land use that's being applied for. So there's a lot of things on the table tonight, pros and cons that were brought up by both sides. Uh, but again, like I said, as appointees of the town council, it is our decision to make, it's our job to make the decision that's right for the property itself that's going up tonight, not the town of Florence. So in no way, shape or form is PNZ saying tonight that we're against a medical dispensary or that we're for a medical dispensary. It's our job tonight to make sure that we make the right decision for the property that's at hand tonight. And with that, if I have nothing further from my commissioners, I would like to make a motion 
that we forward an unfavorable recommendation to the town council on case number PZC 24-13 conditional use permit. And I will second, second that. I have a motion on the floor made by Chairman Woolley and a second by Commissioner Puttrick to forward an unfavorable recommendation on case number PZC 24-13-CUP to the town council. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Please forward our unfavorable re recommendation to the town council at this time. Next agenda item for this evening will be agenda item number six, which is the call to the public for commission's response. Call to the public for public comments on issues within the jurisdiction of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Individual commission members may respond to criticism made, may ask staff to review a matter raised, or may ask that the matter be put on a future agenda. At this time, I will open the call to the public. Is there anybody that would like to address the commission at this time? With that, I will close the call to the public. Next agenda item this evening is call to the commission. Commissioner Anderson? Nothing. Commissioner Putcher? I have nothing. Commissioner Reed? Uh, nothing. I have nothing either. At this time, I'll take a motion for adjournment. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion to adjourn the meeting at 656 made by Commissioner Anderson and seconded by Commissioner Patrick. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? This meeting is now adjourned. <laughs>